watching Unplug TV India. This is Alice Francis. Let's begin with today's top stories. Wedding turned into tragedy. 13 women die after falling in well. PFI holds unity march in Rajasthan to show solidarity against hijab ban. 20-year-old student consumes pesticide to get away from Godman. PM Modi slams Punjab CM over UP Bihar ke bhaiya remark. Wealthiest are growing richer while poor are growing poorer. Manmohan Singh takes dick at BJP-led government. Rare ghost shark discovered by New Zealand scientists. No retreat by Russia troops. Situation on the border still the same. Hong Kong hopes to secure 10,000 hotel rooms as part of the COVID fight. El Salvador's president tells US senators to keep out of eternal affairs. No intention of engaging with China on Indo-Pacific economic framework, USA. A wedding celebration turned into a tragedy after 13 women succumbed to their injuries on Thursday morning in Kushinagar, Uttar Pradesh. The incident occurred at around 8.30 p.m. on Wednesday in Kushinagar's Nebua, Norangia. The incident took place during a wedding program where some people were sitting on a slab of a well and due to heavy load, the slab broke. According to police, a slab of well on which some people were sitting during wedding related ritual broke due to heavy load. Some women and girls had assembled around a covered well for haldi ritual called Mat Korva. The slab then broke due to the weight of the women and caved in with several women falling inside the well. An ex gratia of Rs 4 lakh will be given to the kin of the deceased. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed condolences to the families of those who lost their lives in the incident. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath as well condoled the deaths and wished the injured a speedy recovery. Amid the ongoing hijab row, the Islamic outfit Popular Front of India on Thursday held a unity march in Rajasthan Kota on the occasion of its foundation day. The unity march was taken out to show solidarity with students protesting against the hijab ban in educational institutions in Karnataka. Earlier, the permission to organize the march was denied by the district administration in its order copy. However, the district administration permitted them to hold the rally at a stadium. Popular Front of the India PFI workers marched to Nayapura Stadium in Kota ahead of a public rally there to mark the foundation day of the organization. PFI is banned in some states of the country. Meanwhile, the BJP has hit out at the Congress government in the Rajasthan for allowing the NIA designated radical hate group to enter Rajasthan's political discourse. A computer science student, Hema Malini, committed suicide at an ashram in Turuvalur district after consuming pesticides. Police and the family suspect foul play by the self-styled godman Munusami. The 20-year-old student began to vomit at the ashram. This is when her aunt Indrani told the godman that Hema Malini needs to be hospitalized. To this, Munusami arranged an auto rickshaw but after a couple of hours. When she was taken to the hospital, the doctor diagnosed pesticide inside her body. The doctors attempted treatment but as she didn't respond to it, she was declared dead. Hema Malini's parent brought her to the ashram in the year 2020 to cure a number of chronic ailments. Hema Malini was said to have stomach and neck aches for which she was brought to the ashram. She has been to the ashram since 2020 as the godman did not send her home even when offline classes began. Her parents even said that Hema Malini was forced to attend the late night puja. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who attended a rally in Punjab ahead of the state's election on Sunday, slammed Punjab Chief Minister Charanjit Singh Channi for his advice, UP Bihar ke bhaiya remark, as well as Congress politician Priyanka Gandhi Vadra claiming the family from the Delhi was clapping. Modi said the entire country has been what the Congress Chief Minister said here. His Malik, 
comes from Delhi and that Malik was standing next to him clapping. Guru Gobind Singh was born in India in Bihar's Patna Sahib. Are you going to expel Guru Gobind Singh from Punjab? People with such a divided mentality should not be permitted to run Punjab for even a moment, said Modi. PM Modi also mentioned Dalit legend Guru Ravi Das, whose birth anniversary was celebrated yesterday with different political figures suspending their campaign to visit temples. Chandni made the remark while campaigning with Priyanka Gandhi on the road on Thursday. Priyanka Gandhi was seen clapping and smiling. The remark appeared to be directed in part at Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal who has been campaigning in Punjab for his Aam Admi Party. Continuing the political blame game, this time former Prime Minister and Congress leader Manmohan Singh has hit out at the BJP-led central government for poor policy making, economic failure and Indo-China border issues. Manmohan Singh said that the BJP-led government has no knowledge of economic policy, criticizing the central government for the country's current economic situation. He said that the wealthiest are growing richer while the poor are go going poorer. He added, China is sitting at our border and efforts are being made to repress it. The former Prime Minister, criticizing the administration and its failure on foreign policy, said, Giving politicians hugs of going to eat biryani without an invitation does not enhance relationships. He noted, Manmohan Singh accused the Bharatiya Janta Party of betraying the people and the Punjab chief minister, pointing to CM Charanjit Singh, accusation that his helicopter was denied permission to fly to Hoshiarpur because of Prime Minister Modi's visit. The BJP sought to defame Punjab CM and the state's people over PM Modi's security issue, he claimed. Punjab's 117 assembly members will be elected in a single phase election in three days. Punjab's vote counting will take place on March 10. While the word baby shark is most commonly associated with a popular children's song, it has delighted New Zealand scientists following the rare finding of a baby ghost shark during a study of the east coast of the country's South Island. Ghost sharks, also known as shimras, are not true sharks, although they are related to sharks because their skeletons are made of cartilage instead of bone. Because these aquatic organisms normally live at depths of up to 6,000 feet, they are mainly inaccessible to researchers. Finding one that actually sits in the palm of my hand is incredibly uncommon. Britt Finucci, a scientist, at New Zealand's National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research said on Thursday, What we do know tends to come from the large adults, which are usually a meter, a meter and a half in length. Funuchi stated, The newly hatched ghost shark was retrieved from a depth of 1.2 kilometers. The young ghost shark was photographed with black fins attached to a translucent body a wispy white tail and a black eye. She explained that the baby ghost sharks are located at different depths than adults and in some circumstances they have different appearances. The organisms, sometimes known as rat fish, rabbit fish, elephant fish or spook fish have disproportionately huge heads and eyes in comparison to their bodies. Until they are ready to hatch, Ghost shark embryos develop in egg capsules laid on the sea floor, eating on a yolk. Western countries have proposed arms control and confidence building by Russia at Ukraine's border. The countries have even advised their citizens to leave Ukraine because an attack could occur at any time. Russia denies any intention of invading. As the city confirms an increase in cases in Hong Kong, Government plans to make up to 10,000 hotel rooms available for COVID-19 sufferers and local media claim that testing will be mandatory starting in March. President Naib Bukel told US senators on Wednesday that they should stay out of El Salvador's internal affairs after they demanded a probe into the economic risk the US faces 
as a result of the Central American country's adoption of Bitcoin and legal cash. According to senior U.S. diplomat, the U.S. has no intention of interacting with China in its upcoming Indo-Pacific economic framework, but is instead talking to partners who share the same objective of a free open region with no coercion. Thank you for watching Unplugged TV India. Please hit like, subscribe and share. This is Alice Francis signing off.